So before you start, you're going to want to find the right size enclosure. You want something that's not too big and not too small. This is because if the enclosure is too big, they will have trouble finding their food in the enclosure and if it's too small, they might have trouble molting their skin, which is something that happens quite frequently in a mantis life. Because my mantis is already an adult, I didn't need to worry about this and she was fine in this size enclosure. So the first step of this build is making the drainage layer. This is going to allow the soil above to not be standing in water all the time and because my mantis is a tropical species, comes from a tropical climate, it's going to be quite wet in there and humid. I got these stones from my garden, you don't have to do anything special, you can buy stones if you don't have them, but I had them in my garden so I just washed them and I put them in. So for the next step I'm adding a piece of cloth above the stones to allow the water to pass through to the stones but to also keep the soil on the top layer so that it doesn't fall through and sit in the water. So for the third step we're going to be adding the soil. I used an ABG mix for this which is a type of soil that is used for tropical vivariums and it has loads of different things in it, um, I'll just put a list of those on here like some examples but yeah I used this because it was probably the best option that I could have gone for. So now it's time for the creative part of the setup. I collected loads of twigs for this build from my garden because I know that mantis love to climb and I wanted to give her as many opportunities to climb as I could. Now I had the twigs in place, I began to add moss and plants to the setup. I chose plants that would grow well in the setup and would grow really quickly, and also plants that the mantis would use to climb on. I'll put a list of the plants that I use for this setup on the screen here so that if you want some ideas on what plants to use you can use these and you'll know that they're safe to use for your vivarium. So the next step is adding leaf litter. This is going to be one of the main food sources for your cleanup crew which you'll be adding later on. In my opinion, leaf litter makes the vivarium look so much more natural and if you're doing a bioactive setup, then this is the way to go. The most natural way or natural looking that you can make. It. 
I did also just want to say that if you are feeding things like crickets to your mantis that you make sure that they're actually eating the food and they don't just go hiding in the leaf litter because that is one potential problem that can occur when you're using leaf litter. What I do is when I'm feeding my mantis I give the food directly to her so that I can see that she's eaten the food. So the last step is adding the cleanup crew, which is going to make this setup bioactive. They eat things such as decaying matter and mold, which is good because they return the nutrients back into the soil, which benefits the plants. And also the fact that they feed on these things in the first place means that you don't have to clean as often. So this is the final product, the final look of the vivarium. I didn't want to make it too sophisticated in there because as I said, it makes it hard for the mantis to find her food. So it was quite simple, but it was good for a mantis. Now let's go and get her and add her to a new home. Thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it then don't forget to leave a like and comment below and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this coming very soon.